So um, let's f uh, find the kangaroo physics engine object and work backwards and see what else we need. All right, so we're going to drop in the kangaroo physics object. Right, the force objects, we're going to need to bring all the force objects together here. Anchor points, we're going to need that for this solution. And we can set up our simulation controls because that's the easiest thing to do. It's um, Whenever you drop this in, you probably want to get into the habit of just doing that right away. So um, for that, we're going to go ahead and drop in a uh, Boolean toggle as we did before, coming from params input. So simulation reset, I said it's true. We need our timer, as we did before. Set it to 20 milliseconds and attach it to this object. So whenever it expires, this has to refresh. Right? And what I like to do is actually like to group these two together and um, give the color something that I can see uh, very clearly um, when I'm zoomed out, something like uh, this kind of magenta and say that this should be my labeled as my simulation controls. Right, so I know that whenever I need to make any modifications to how the simulation is running, I'm going to go here. Okay, so um, now as we did before, we're going to want to um, collect all of our force objects together into one input and flatten it. So if you have a suggestion or you remember how we did that before, go ahead and drop it into the questions window. Again, the idea here is that we need to bring multiple wires together so that they can go into the force objects as one. All right, you, well done. It is under sets, tree, merge. We want to merge all of the force objects together. All right, so I'll bring that in. And I like to go ahead and just group it and label it automatically. This is all force objects. Okay. Make sure that you flatten the output of the force objects by right-clicking. Flatten. All right. And one of the force objects we know we are going to use are our springs. So we can connect that and connect the force objects into the input for the kangaroo object. All right. So now we have our springs, um, and we need to also have some sense of gravity, right? So let's go ahead and set up our uh, gravity once more. And for that, we're going to apply gravity to these points, right? The ones that are actually located here um, in the division, right? Those are the points that are going to get gravity applied to them so that they fall. All right, so let's go to the kangaroo tab. We're going to get the unary force again. It's our way of creating gravity. The points that we're going to apply the force to are P, coming out of division. And then let's go ahead and set up um, our standard force as we have been doing before, which is under vector, vector, unit Z. And we'll grab a panel and define our value for our force as negative 9.8. All right, so that vector goes into force, and we can put the unary force into D. All right, so let's take, uh, let's have a little challenge question. If I hit simulate and um, allow my timers to be unblocked, Will my chain behave as expected or not? Let's take a poll. So go ahead and drop your suggestion as to what's going to happen into the question window. That's correct. It will fly away. All right. So if I turn my preview back on, there they go, right? My uh, points are connected but they're just falling, right? Um, they're not acting as a catenary chain because there's no anchors yet, right? Um, and again, you can use any of the forces that are based on uh, points to uh, start your simulation. Um, there was a recommendation that we use something more interesting like the rocket 
which is a thrust force. Um, and there's there's many more like power law, which is like attractors, etc. I'm going to keep um, I'm going to stick with unary force because we're actually going to um, start to make uh, some more interesting shapes. And I'm going to keep my force consistent because this is the simplest to use. Uh, but if you want to try something else out, go for it. All right. So the the thing that we need to get this to act like a catenary chain is the anchors, right? So we need to supply a, a set of points to the anchor points input here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my force objects, merge, and then I'm going to also include the group. And I'm going to copy and paste. Um, I'll disconnect the inputs, uh, rename it. These are all of my anchors, right? And the anchors are going to come from the endpoints of this component here, the sub curve. So I'm going to go to my uh, curve analysis endpoints object, drop that in. So my sub curve endpoints are going to connect to my merge object here for all my anchors. All right, and then I can supply this to the anchor points. And now if I toggle my simulation reset to false and let my um, timer be released, I can now see my catenary curve. And if I modify the anchor points right, by changing this length of the subcurve, you'll see that it falls farther or it more closely approximates the original curve based on where those anchor points are along uh, the original curve. All right, so I'll turn some previews off so maybe we can see this a little bit better. All right, so here we have wherever it starts, that's where the um, where the anchor points will be initially defined as. And again, everything is relative to the original curve. So you're seeing it stretching because they're springs, they can't act exactly like chains or chain links. Um, but you'll see that it's trying to appro approximate the original curve based on its length, right? All right, so then um, if I include the line segments here under geometry into here, let's see if we can't, uh, doesn't like, since these aren't actually line segments, they're curve segments it can't bring that through, right? So um, let's take a second and uh, look at a different way to get our geometry to pass through the uh, kangaroo uh, physics engine object. So I'll uh, block my timers and hit save real quick, All right? And the idea is that we need to somehow keep um, the information of our segments from before they're simulated to after they're simulated. Right? Sometimes kangaroo is helpful if it's a point or a line. It's uh, able to easily digest that and show us the results if we plug it into geometry. But other times it uh, doesn't work as well. Right? So um, what we can do is we can take these segments here and if we um, were to, under curve analysis, grab the endpoints in the same way we did the original curve. So I'll take the segments and plug them in to C. And I'm going to uh, copy and paste this merge here. Disconnect my inputs. So now I have a new merge that I can use. I'm going to connect my segments uh, start and end into this merge. This is going to be all of my geometry. And instead of flattening as an output, I'm going to graft the input of the endpoints object. What this allows me to do is store the start and end on a single data tree. So what I'm passing through the physics engine object is a number of lists, each with two points on it. And those are my endpoints. right? So the geometry input can take a data tree, but the force objects and anchor points inputs cannot. 
right? So we can use the ability, Grasshopper's ability to organize things in hierarchical lists um, through the um, data trees in the geometry input, but not otherwise, right? We can't use those data trees in the other inputs, all right? So uh, what we need to do is just reconstruct our line segment after the geometry passes through the physics engine. So we'll just grab a polyline from curve spline and connect it to geometry out. Right? And I'll take all of this stuff here and just turn the preview off so that what I see is just the particles and the resulting line segments. Save and release my timers. Now we can see the line segments that are being reconstructed here. Right? And if I change the location of my anchors, my catenary curve updates. Okay, so if you have any questions about the catenary curves, let's go ahead and address them now. And um, if you're typing those in, uh, what, we'll do, what I'll do is I'll open the other file, which is, um, has another example of how to work with catenary chains. I like this one because it uh, is related to like, things that we understand in the world, like if I just hold a chain in my hand. Um, but we can use the same concepts uh, and just be a little bit more uh, loose in terms of how we're working with that in the simulation environment to work with uh, catenaries in a different way, where we're not actually controlling each one of the um, catenaries individually, but we assume that they're going to stretch, and we, we more specifically define where the anchor points are going to be. Right, so here's um, drawn in top view a few curves. Uh, anchor the four points that are um, here at the edge. Right, and you can start to work with multiple catenaries that are interconnected in this way. Right? And you can just allow this rest length factor to be a kind of stretch factor. You let them, let them be longer than they originally were, and you can get some really interesting um, results with some very simple inputs. All right, so it doesn't look like there are any additional questions, so let's go ahead and um, carry on.